I mean, it's an experience I would have never had if it weren't for the shoot. So I can appreciate that. I don't think we would have, you know, Croatia wasn't really on a hot list off the top. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of cool. And then just, but I would definitely say you don't want to go there in July and August. The heat was brutal. It was, <laughs> it was killer. It was killer. What was a highlight? For me, it's always been, I travel because Let I want to see the cult. The, the, the people. people. <laughs> yes. The people. Hi, Julie. <laughs> Hello. I think people need to know that we don't have a pre-conversation before the conversation. We just dive right into the conversation. And I have not spoken to you face-to-face -face in probably two weeks now. Is that right? Mm -hmm. did, did we FaceTime yeah. at all when I was away? I don't even think we had one. I don't even think we had one We had like when one. Early on? Earlier on while you were still shooting. Oh, so long ago that I barely remember it. <laughs> but... Yes. So this is real time, us catching up in real time. <laughs> I kind of love it. All right. So let's start with, we don't even have a topic to, for today. We're just going to jump in to have a quick catch up conversation, which I think is going to be fun because there's some, mm -hmm. a lot of things we can catch up on. So one part of it, you know, a little bit about, but we returned home yesterday and from where you need to, from, you need to give more context. Contextualize. Okay. Yeah. I've been away for two weeks in Croatia. And I started in the city of Zagreb filming commercials. No, filming TikToks. I always get mixed up when I say that. So I've been filming social media content now. We're going to talk about that later on in the episode. So I was filming TikToks for four days on a production shoot, like on a full-up shoot. And then I took another six days off after to go see Dubrovnik. We ended up going to the island of Havar. And dad met me there. So we ha I had like a little vacation following the shoot. So that was fun. But so he was here. But when he left, I guess unbeknownst to him, we arrived home last night to a smell in the house that I can only tell you was like a dirty diaper smell. And I'm like, what the hell? Did he leave a the garbage in the bin? Because he was the last one out of the house. <laughs> and I'm looking around. We couldn't find anything. And I went to put some groceries we brought in the refrigerator and I nearly keeled over because the smell in the refrigerator was from the compressor I must have shut off like a week ago. So there was a heat wave. The refrigerator probably kept cool for a few days because when it's closed and if the compressor goes and it stops yeah. working. So the thing wasn't working. And then it was 100 degrees probably in the house. For We had the air, the air conditioning set to 86, so it didn't get too hot. But still, 86 is hot when it's days on end uh, and the refrigerator isn't working. The smell that was coming out of there, everything melted in the freezer. It was warm. So the food had created warm temperatures inside the refrigerator. It wasn't even just like normal. Yucky. I, oh my God. Okay. So thankfully, I do live with an engineer who's immediately fixing. He's a fixer. So he's on the phone. Next thing I, I, I literally was still unpacking and pulling, bringing in things from the car. And he was already on the phone with the, with the refrigerator company trying to figure out the troubleshoot <laughs> and everything like that. Anyway, long and story short, it's not worth fixing because it's 10 years old. And they said that the compressor is going to be expensive to fix. And he's just like, let's get a new refrigerator. So immediately he's looking at refrigerators and all that. But today... So we can't get a refrigerator delivered until Monday. So we have the mm. whole weekend without the refrigerator. The smell in the house, I can't even tell you. I'm cleaning. I don't want to clean it too much because I know we're getting rid of it. But at this point, so I don't want to be like in up to my elbows cleaning this refrigerator. So I'm, ugh, so I'm doing as much as I can to get the smell out of the house. I have like a fan blowing and I'm going like gangbusters on cleaning. And then... Um, and then he goes out this morning, comes back with a little tabletop refrigerator from Home Depot. Because oh he's like, God. I'm not going to walk up and down the stairs all, all weekend to get the milk. <laughs> I was cracking up. I That's just thought that hilarious. was so funny. So now we have like a college refrigerator on the counter for the weekend for so that we don't have to grow up and down stairs, which is hilarious. That's a typical Tom fixer move. And then we have a, a new re the replacement refrigerator coming on Monday. So that's what happened. Woohoo. Fun times coming home after 10 hours on a flight and having to been up like for hours before that. And then having to like dive into a refrigerator cleanup. I can't <laughs> imagine. I mean, <sighs> I have a s not, I have a refrigerator story, but it's not of the same. Do you? Well, what, what happened? happened last when I, when I, I told, and I hurt myself. Oh, when you uh, when you when the thing fell out of the refrigerator yeah. and fell, oh, that, broke your toe. That's that's really <laughs> only my update. Oh, you just spoiled it. Oh, <laughs> that's my okay. only update. That of what happened. Yeah, since I'm gone, is that 
a what was it that fell out of the freezer? Well, to recap, we had kidney stones. We had a car accident. I feel like there was something else. This is the something else maybe, but I'm opening the freezer <laughs> last week. Okay, first of all, let's backtrack even more. On Monday of last week, I passed my kidney stone, oh, which was that's so exciting. The best. Yeah. And that's I took it in today to get analyzed. So, making making moves. But the day after I passed my kidney stone, I'm literally posting on Instagram that I just passed my kidney stone, like hallelujah. And I go to make lunch and I open the freezer and one of those, you know, when you order something cold and you get one of those ice packs that in packaging where it's like the plastic, it's like a whatever. So we saved a couple of those. We don't have a ton of ice packs for when we go to the beach in case, I don't know. So one of those was rock hard, fell out, landed on my toes, on my second toe, on my right foot. And as soon as it hit, I was in so much pain that I screamed. And Steven was wearing noise canceling headphones. Oh. And I literally screamed. And I don't really, usually, when I get hurt, I usually don't scream. You yeah. know, I don't, I get real quiet and I go, I'm okay. This time I screamed. So, you know, it's bad. But I oh screamed. I went, I think I just broke my toe. And I'm getting so freaked out that I broke my toe because I'm like, oh my God, I broke my toe. This is like, oh my God, I'm in so much pain. I'm in so much pain that I'm like, I'm going to pass out. I'm oh, going to no. faint. <laughs> I forgot about this part. And so <laughs> I tell Steven, I'm going to pass out. And he is trying to get me a chair. He's trying to like do all the things. <laughs> and before I know it, I pass out. And I have no memory except that I wake up on the ground to Steven like snapping in my face trying to get me to come to. Oh my God, Julie. <sighs> it literally, I texted that string of events to somebody. I was like, yeah, something fell out of the freezer and it hit my toe so hard. It hit my toe that I thought I broke my toe. And then I got grossed out that I broke my toe that I fainted. And then I fainted so hard that I hit my <laughs> head. Oh my God. And so the consensus is that I, I don't know if I broke my toe. But apparently I have a concussion (laughs) or a very mild concussion from hitting my head. And my toe had like a bruise the size of a golf ball. Like not. Oh, yeah. Like those things are funny. Like they get the bruise happens fast. And then if you ice it, it does go down. Yeah. Yeah. No, I get it. I get it. So my gosh, that is crazy. and And then I had like a mystery, like my armpit was tender last week. And then I was like, oh, my God, is something wrong with my armpit? I didn't even tell you this part. And yeah. I wasn't sure. I was like, one day I was like, oh, my God, is that a bump? I'm freaking out. And then I realized that when I fell, I fell on a chair that has arms. So I must oh. have, like, landed Bruised in my armpit, armpit on the – yeah. So my armpit is very tender, too. <laughs> I'm telling you, when you when you when something happens – there's always residual something else because you don't notice the little thing. Like you wouldn't notice that you hit your arm because the big thing was that you, the toe and you're fainting. Exactly. And you know, it's funny. Well, we do have that in common because I'm a fainter. So we should talk. We, we got to really cover this fainting thing for a second. I have always been a fainter since being very young. And I wouldn't, I remember I would get blood taken. I would faint or I would be, if I got hurt, really badly. Like when I was in first grade, fell off my bike and the handlebar went in my eye and I fainted. I mean, I faint when I get hurt really badly. Mm -hmm. It's part of me. And I know. Yeah. Okay. That's what I was saying. Cause the last time I fainted was blood drawn. And then the time before that, it was when I got my finger stuck in a door and I thought I broke my finger. So it's like always when I think I break something that I get freaked out and I'm like, I can't deal. (laughs) <laughs> yes, we're fainters. And the fainters in the world will understand because you know the feeling. And I have gotten so much better at it because I fainted for many more years than you at this point because I have just, you know, years <laughs> more ahead of you of an age. So now I know when I'm going to faint and I can pretty much go, oh, my God, I'm going to faint. So from being young, what my mother always told me was put your head between your, the, your knees. Now, nurses might tell you otherwise, but this has worked for me through the years. The minute I feel that feeling, and it's sometimes you'll see little spotty spots or sometimes half my vision will go. Sometimes I know I'm going to faint and I flip my head over. The minute I do that, the blood goes back to my head and I don't pass out. So mm-hmm. literally that should be your instinct. I don't care. I know people are going to come at us for this because this supposedly it's not the thing to do. I don't know. You maybe have to lay down or put your feet up, but I'm telling you, put the head between the knees. It's, you're coming right back. And that's the first thing I do. Like sit down immediately, head between the knees and it works. I've done it for years. 
and I haven't fainted in a long time because I know how to avoid the fainting now. But yeah. when I was getting one of my spinal injections and I said to the people, I'm on the table getting the spinal injection during chemo and something, and they caused me a lot of pain. So I was getting close and I'm like, you know, I'm going to faint. And I tried to tell them, I, and I'm like, I feel it coming. I know I'm going to faint and I need to somehow get my head upside down. And they had me in a position that was weird because they were trying to get this needle in. And I, and they right away, my vitals, everything, they were ready to pull the needle out. I said, no, 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 just tilt my head down. <laughs> Down. don't take the needle out because I didn't want to start over yeah. <laughs> I was so stressed out <laughs> and so they made it managed to bring me back but you know you know as you get older you'll be able to work around the, that feeling yeah. like you well, like it's just, I have God. to go get I have to get more blood drawn and the last time I fainted was when I got blood drawn and I'm seeing like a holistic like natural doctor so they're asking they're doing like normal blood work times 10 because they're ordering yeah. things at like a regular doctor so like the last time I fainted was because I was getting so much blood taken I fasted for like over 12 hours at that point and I opened my eyes I did good through getting the blood drawn but I opened my eyes and they had the basket of the, all the vials in front no. of my face for when I opened after I was done I was like that's it that's and I it. think they must have been busy or I had a new nurse because I was just like I'm gonna faint I really don't feel well I think I'm gonna faint and she's like okay well, let's walk you to the back room oh my god no <laughs> No. Walk me to the back room. I'm going to faint. So then I... You have to lay down immediately or get your head down. I got up and I fainted. And I also, in a fun surprise, threw up while I fainted. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Julie, you're a train wreck. So oh my I gosh. have to get my blood work done for an update because it's been like over six months and they want to see like if things have gotten better you know. based on like the healing protocol. And I'm like dreading it because I'm like, I need to it. go. I need to tell them ahead of time. Like I need to lie down while you do this. Yes, That's a really <laughs> good thing. Tell them ahead of time because once a fainter, always a fainter. And even with all the chemo and the needles and all this stuff, still when I go to get blood drawn, I cannot look at the needle going in. I'm like, go ahead, just do no. it. I can't look because if I look, I will get lightheaded. I can't do it. And I can take... My tolerance is higher for needles and stuff now and the pain, but I still will faint if I, if I, yeah. <laughs> it's just the way it is, the way I'm wired. And then it's also like being scared of heights. No matter how many times I go, I climb the zip line, I do the bungee thing or whatever. I think I'm going to push through the fear. I'm not going to be afraid of heights anymore. It's in me. I am just, that's how my, it's a body reaction when I'm up high my knees get weak. I get a strange feeling in my stomach. It's just the way I'm wired. And no matter how much you yeah. do it supposedly if you do it more you can desensitize yourself but i would have to literally live on the top of the empire state building and be outside every day to desensitize myself <laughs> oh my I god can't get, i can't get over it it's just part well, of me it's part that was my week i had an, yet another medical blunder <laughs> god okay and well, my toe and my toe doesn't really hurt except I'm we glad. walked on the beach last week and then it hurts so i was like you know you're using more your toe muscles yeah, when you're yeah, walking yeah. So, Anyway, yeah. let's go on to like more. No, upbeat I'm glad. It, I'm, gl I'm glad we can go on to upbeat topics, but I do have to tell you this because, yeah, I think maybe you know because I did post it on Instagram. But when I was on the shoot, and so we'll talk about why this happens mm. when I'm on the shoot, but I um, have to move around very quickly before they change a setup in order to get my TikTok content. So we will discuss this, but I'm whipping around a corner at this shoot, and I didn't realize there was braces on the back of this wall that was being held up in this in the spot. I whipped around that turn to try and get hurry up to get to this shot, which lesson learned, I'm not moving fast anymore like that because it was crazy. I whip around, trip over this thing, fall into a door. I got an egg on my head. I hit my head so hard on this door that it blew up in a minute and people were like, oh my God, get her ice. And we're in Europe, try and find ice in Europe. It was like t 10 minutes before they could, <laughs> you know, they don't have ice really on hand. So yeah. even the even the medic didn't have ice. Like, where's the crunchy ice packs that you have on the soccer? <laughs> nope, the medic did not have one. Those so are anyway, the ice packs me. that destroyed my toe. Oh my god! Well, anyway, like I finally got anyway. I got some ice on it, and the thing went down. But I I was just like, Vroom. but what I didn't notice. And this is such a perfect example of you with the armpit. The next day, I'm like, boy, my knee hurts, and I suddenly re and I remembered that when I fell, of course, I tripped over the brace. And I hit this door, but I went down on my knee to break my fall. So I completely forgot about that. So the next day I'm mm -hmm. like limping along. <laughs> What's wrong with my knee? I'm like, oh yeah, when I fell, I probably like destroyed my knee too. Yeah. So crazy. So crazy. Uh, accidents are a crazy thing when they happen in the weirdest, at the weirdest times. And plus I didn't want to feel 
this is going to go into like the age thing, but like, oh, the older lady fell on the shoot, you know, not to be, <laughs> but I was like, I was going, I was moving like a 30 year old around a turn. So that's probably part of the problem. I have to slow down because I was like flipping around that turn. Anybody would have fell the way I was whipping around it. But I felt so that's embarrassed. Sorry. I even came to the room. I go, okay, is this like my first old person fall? <laughs> I just felt so embarrassed. So and funny. I'm like, I'm fine. I'm good. And they were all like, worrying about me and everything it was very sweet but very embarrassing it was funny today I don't know why that makes me think of this but I went to a urologist to drop off my stone and get it like analyzed or whatever and because like kidney stones are a thing for like older adults the doctor oh. must have said like five times oh my god you're so young you're so young you're so <laughs> young like the whole time I'm like I don't feel young I'm here oh. talking about kidney stones I feel like a, a 70 year old embrace it when you get told you're young it's so great it's so great all right well, but it was like you're too young to be here you shouldn't be here because you're yeah. so you're you should be young and agile but i guess i inherited your kidney stones just a little too early mm. my kidney stones and my fainting now we have two things that you you have uh, embraced but yeah i was gonna say shout out to steven for uh taking care of me post yeah. faint and during the faint and i know I'm best nurse I'm always thankful for him be, being there when these things happen. I always, I always think, oh my gosh, I feel like well, you lived alone and stuff like that happened. You know, you'd be, I, I'm glad I don't have to be worried. I'm not a worrier as a parent though. In general, the, people will, who was I just talking to the other day that was saying, oh yeah, it was really helpful for me when my daughter lived far away to be able to, tr to it was Nicola, to be able to see where she was on her, on the phone. And I'm like, geez, I can always see where you are, but it never even occurs to me to look where you are. Unless <laughs> I really, I'm like, I want to call you and I'm wondering, are you at an open mic? Or are you out? Maybe I would look before I tried to reach you in that case. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't, I'm not ever concerned about your whereabouts. And that doesn't, I'm not that kind of parent. I don't, I don't know. I just don't worry That's in that way. Good. I think, I think you probably check where I am more often just because you're well, wondering the same if it's thing good. when I want to know same if I can yeah, when you or not. Exactly. Exactly. I don't know. It's just funny. Different ty styles of, of um, parenting. This was a funny one. When I was on the shoot, I was w in a van with, um, <laughs> you're going to love this story. See, this is the things that I wanted to tell you, but at the time I couldn't get on the phone and talk to you about these things because I just didn't have any time. So we're catching up now. So there's an, a client lady in the car that's about probably close to my age. And then there was two, literally one of the women was like in her 20, they're both in their 20s. So in the, more like your age people in the back seat. And so we're in this van. So she's talking about, somehow we were talking about um, you. And I was like, how you live in California, but we work together. I, somehow that came up. And she said, oh, that must be so tough. My daughter lives far. It was so, so hard. And I said, yeah, I know. But, uh, you know, I'm just happy that she lives where she wants to live. And so we talked a little bit about the long distance thing. But she went on a tear about how when her daughter moved and how, you know, I just, you know, you don't want to say anything because you don't want to um, convince them or have them think that you don't approve. Like she was talking like a mom. OK. And it was so weird okay. for me to listen to it because I was listening to it and thinking, <clears throat> okay. I was relating it to it like the 30 year old person. Like I was more with the ladies in the back seat kind of thinking, Oh God, like I, I <laughs> wait, I can't because, and I even said this at one point in the conversation, I said, the trouble, I said, I understand where you're coming from, but having had parents that were so, so, so overbearing, I still fight that battle of the overbearingness in the parentals. So I still think about my the person that's the younger person I still think of myself as the kid that's what I said to them and I said I I can almost relate to this conversation more from their point of view because the the kids the, the younger girls were talking about how yeah well my when my mom is like when I, my my mom like is checking on me or something like that or I I can't really explain it but they're Oh, this is not going, coming out right. Anyway, their <laughs> point of their point. I was seeing everything she was saying. I was immediately triggered, and if that's the word, I was triggered mm -hmm. as the twenty-year-old, not as like, oh, I'm relating to you as a mom. It was the weirdest thing, and I recognized it as it was happening, and I'm like, no, to everything that she's saying right now, and I couldn't say that. She number one, she's the client lady, and number two, she was looking at me like, right, you know, that's how it is when we are parents, and I'm like. 
Yeah, I'm shaking my head no the whole time. Like, I don't know what to say. I can't like disagree with the client lady. But I also I so I finally did say, I don't know, I'm still because of my my parental situation. I, I relate to this conversation more from you guys point of view. And I pointed to the ladies in the back. And I'm, uh, so I always think of it from my daughter's point of view before I even think of it from a parenting point of view. I just thought that was interesting. But and it was a moment of clarity for me because I realized that that's a lot of I think of why I am the way I am as a parent Mm. yeah it was so clear because I suddenly realized my reaction inside was the kid point of view and I Mm. reacted to it as if I was still the 28 year old and this lady was telling me what to do like my mom I can't even explain it but it was like "Mm." (laughs) you know yeah it's like an outer outer body experience it was, reaction. It was such a moment of like crystal clear uh, difference in parenting. And be, and I figured out why it is because I still, and just like if you always say like in therapy when you they, they'll talk about like your younger self and you think about your younger self, a lot of my reactions to things now are still from my younger self perspective. Hmm. Right. Interesting. I, yeah. yeah. I don't even think when I'm on these sets, I don't feel like I feel more connected to the people that are your age than the people that are my own age, especially when that, right. that moment ha- that moment happened. You're a young soul. I am a young soul. And I'm not saying it to say I'm trying to be a young soul. It's just my wiring. <laughs> well, that's good. I like that you're a young soul. It makes life better. Yeah, good and lucky for you. <laughs> lucky for me and yes. Tommy and Jonathan. And Tommy and Jonathan. It's funny because so I remember back in the day, I'd be like, oh my God, like Tommy gets to have you as a young mom and I'm going to have you as an old <gasps> mom. Like I remember that like feeling like yes. that. I remember you saying it to me and I was like, don't worry, I'm still going to be the same person. And it's, it's, I remember it so clearly. I could picture it in your little pink room. <laughs> My little pink with the room. covers with the little pink and blue little oh. design on the cover. But I have a question. This is random mm-hmm. and off topic, but you always tell the story about how I always was, you always how you would come home from work and I would be like, "Mommy, new earrings." Yeah. And Stephen and I were both wondering. Like he asked me, and then I was like, "I don't know." How old was I when that would happen? Very like how young? young? Very young. Be- because I was, <laughs> I would pick you up. So you were in my arms. So you were closer to my ears. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's how young. Because it was like you were like two and a half and something. And I would pick you up. And I'd be like, Julie. And I would be going for the cuddle. And you'd be like, no, mommy, new earrings? <laughs> That's so, crazy. Yes, very I young. Thought, I, my guess was like, oh, I was probably like six or seven. No, no. Very young. Wow. Being I'm held. impressed with myself. Yeah, very observant. You were always very observant. Still am. Always watching the mothership with close eyes. <laughs> you know me. That's I'm why a when, and then watcher. when I'm with you, you're looking at me and you're like, do you have a black head? I'm like, oh, dear. <laughs> That's how close you're watching me one time. No. <laughs> Sometimes oh I do that, yeah. Sometimes, I know. Uh, I you know. make sure you're, you're, look, you're good. Keep me, keep me good. Keep me good. Keep me, what is it? Say keep me honest or keep me good whatever it is but yeah that's why I appreciate your honesty because you've always been very you've never held back and I like that so thanks <laughs> funny stuff though that's Tom coming out yes of me. for sure <laughs> for sure <laughs> oh the Tom one is I wouldn't blow smoke up yes that's right that's what he always says <laughs> you know I don't blow and then smoke it, hell you know I don't yeah. blow smoke <laughs> yeah you know I don't blow smoke I don't blow smoke <laughs> This is funny. I have a video I'm going to post from the trip and I have one shot, well, two shots of him in the video. And I was debating, I'm going to show it to him before I post it because you know how he doesn't want to be in my content. But there was some, we were with that woman, the travel agent, Alita, that I met. That was so much fun. We'll talk about it. But when we, when she was with us, she was like, oh, let me take a picture of the two of you. And she, every t- everywhere we went, she was like, get together. I'll take a picture of the two of you. And Tom kept saying, I don't, I don't do photos, you know. But there was some nice pictures she took of us. So I've used a nice. couple of them because you know how you can turn them into, you can take live photos and turn them into video yeah. when you edit. So I did, I d- took a couple of the photos and it's like of him and he's actually smiling big and it's like, it's a nice shot of the two of us. So I, p- I put them in the video. I was working on, I have like a whole bit about you being like an influencer 
And then oh. I wanted to add another section. Well, you, you know, you know the bit. Yeah, I wanted yeah. to add more jokes to it about how like you are so online and dad is so not online that people think like I'm estranged from my dad or that he's dead or that you're like divorced or a widow. And that, like that's how uninvolved he is that people think he just is like <laughs> doesn't exist. <laughs> well, it's just it's the wacky online perspective of you only people only know what they see of you online. And yeah. so because he's not online with me, they know you guys. Everybody knows you guys. And he's just like this, you know, not, he's not present, but he's so present in life. Right yeah. away, fixing the refrigerator. Right, right away there, like the minute when I was blind, getting the apartment in a place where I could find things. So he's very, very there. It's just that he doesn't have an online presence. So it's confusing, I think, a lot of times. But I kind of like it. It's like a little, uh, you know, a little bit of mystery in the, in the, he says, oh, it's better. Keep you, keep them guessing. Like, don't, I'm not going to be on. So now I'm like, should I take this shot out of this video or what? Cause it's going to be going, this one I want to put on TikTok and he'll be in it in the last shot of the two of us. It's a cute photo. I'll send it to you. Anyway, it's funny, but yeah, the, <laughs> he did, we, when we did have fun on the trip and he did, he does meet my, when I get together with TikTok people, they will be like, oh, it's nice to meet you because we know the whole rest of the family, but we've never seen mm. you. So the same thing happens with her. She's like, I feel like I know your whole family, but I, but I don't know your husband. And her husband and that dad got along really well because they were the same type of personality. Like, you know how dad will go, I hate people. This guy was this Croatian guy. He's like, I just hate people. <laughs> he was very like harsh. And I said, as soon as he said it, I go, oh, him and him and Tom are going to get along so well. And they did. They got along oh so God. well the whole night. Very funny. How very was funny. The, but dad the really, other? Not, as they would say, they're not antisocial. They just don't like people. <laughs> That's how I mean, I it. can relate to that. Like, I have to I be in the mood to like socialize. <laughs> <laughs> socialize. I have to use that word more on the podcast. But Socialize. Don't, don't yeah, overdo it. No, I won't. But it's, it is funny. <laughs> could, it's funny when like, it comes socialize, up randomly. Socialize. Socialize. I, I very rarely even say it. But Oh, gosh. What other, what other right. highlights from the trip? Let's. Okay. Okay. So the, oh, wait. Hold on, hold on. Let's break it down. Yeah. Because I feel like if I just ask you the open ended question, you'll just talk for 10 minutes and you'll give me an entire recap. Give so me I'm going to ask pointed questions. Yeah, please do. What Thank you. was. Um, what was a highlight? Like one moment that was like a highlight. So should we do it work versus pl uh, fun? I think we have to because Let's do fun. It's too oh really? So okay, okay. One work highlight and one per fun vacation okay. highlight. So my work highlight is an overall highlight of what I enjoyed about this shoot, which was connecting with the talent. The talent was so much fun and they were so awesome and each one of them I just felt like sometimes I I could I would say oh this one was my favorite and then this one was my favorite and like they were all my favorite in some weird way and so that part of it for me is the freaking best so mm -hmm. I got to meet that comedian woman and she was so awesome and there was things involved with that there were these two young models that had the energy that they light up the room and one of them was like, oh, our energies just match each other. And then I thought to myself, which I could get almost emotional thinking about it. I was like, do I do that for people? Like, because mm. I felt so like, oh, my God, they just like light up the room. And she was like, no, 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 you light up the room. I'm like, no, no, you light up the room. And it was like an argument over who lights up the room. And it was just mm -hmm. like so sweet. They were, I loved both of them. These two and the youngest models of all were the ones that I just vibed with the best. And they were yeah. both like re dancing with me and they were immediately ready. As soon as I was like, they'd, and one of them. Do you know, towards the end of the shoot, I made a video where I had my selfie stick and I was waiting. It was the last shot. I was sweating for yeah. four days straight. It was exhausting, draining. The whole thing was really tough with no air conditioning everywhere we went. But I took my selfie stick and I was waiting for this woman because I was waiting because she was getting her hair fixed and I was doing an overhead shot. So I had purchased this new selfie stick, by the way. Love it. Oh, I so saw I purchased it. Oh, I know. <laughs> so I purchased the thing. So new I had tripod it stick, mommy. It was such a good <laughs> <laughs> exactly and it's such a good one because it's a tripod and it's a selfie stick and it does the whole thing so I had oh it my and God. I, was, I had it extended and I was waiting for it because I was doing this overhead shot 
And while I was waiting, I was like, oh, I'm going to get in the set by myself and I'm going to like dance with my selfie stick. So I took the selfie stick. There's a crew. When I tell you, there was multiple crews working. They were shooting something over here with product. There was a still photographer over here. So it was massive groups of people everywhere. It wasn't like I was alone Mm -hmm. in the studio. And I just said, F it, I don't care. So I put my selfie stick as far as I could. I had no music playing at all, but I pretended I was singing in my head and I had music and I was dancing and swirling around with my (laughs) selfie stick. Mm -hmm. And one of the young girls, the one who was like, our energies match, she was on the set and they were shooting her for some product shots and she just caught it out of her eye and she goes, I love you because she could see me from a distance doing this thing in the set by myself. So that was the highlight, like the connections with the people were the absolute highlight. Okay, Okay, now for a fun one. For a fun one. Like non-work. Sadly, it always has to do with people, but it was, not sadly, happily, it always has to do with people. It was meeting a fellow TikToker in person that we both figured out it was like Jumanji, like the movie. Because she just said, I can't believe that she's been following me for four years or something, or three years since she's been on the app. I only have been following her for a week when somebody said, you're in Croatia, you have to connect with this TikToker there. And I was like, who? And I go and I look, and she's the woman's following me. So I followed her back. And then I started looking at her content. And I got to know her a little bit from watching her videos. And so I messaged her and I was like, oh, I'm in Croatia. I was told I should reach out to you. And she's like, oh, my God, I've been following you forever, blah, blah, blah. We're going to get together. So for us, and she said it, she was like, I feel like I jumped inside the phone and I'm meeting you and I'm experiencing what I experience in your videos in person now. And I was like, it's like we Jumanji'd. So I was saying I Jumanji'd into her phone and she (laughs) Jumanji'd into my phone. And that was my highlight it was so much fun we because we were jumanji so we jumanji and we TikToked together so she had the idea of this video she wanted to make where she was pulling me from one location to the next so of course we had to plan it and right away we were it was two tiktokers in the wild literally planning content and thank goodness the men got along so they were over there talking and the two of us were like conniving how we were going to do the shots we had a tribe we had my tripod my new one that selfie one i took it with me because it fits in the purse it's so small it's great so I had that. And then at one point, though, we were moving so quickly that her husband was the tripod. We just had him standing holding the phone. And then mm-hmm. Tom was shooting. Tom was filming behind the scenes of everything. It was so funny. It was so that was the highlight. And that was kind of cool that we sort of saved that for the end. It was really great. But the cities that we visited, I can tell you, OK, Zagreb was very suburban, um, it's quaint, normal, like the doing a bike ride was great. I did a, a tour by myself the first day just to get to know the city. I did a bike tour. That was a lot of fun. And I mm-hmm. love doing tours where I just go by myself and I get to connect with people. <laughs> There's a theme, but that was fun. And then shot, did the shoot for four days, intense heat, crazy heat wave the whole time. So there was no relief from heat wherever we were. And then the going to Dubrovnik was such a different experience because that was so quintessential Europe with like the the walls of the city and the old Mm -hmm. stone and that was really cool just seeing a city like I've never seen before that was super super cool and then it was so effing 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 hot that we had to get out of the city so we saw it in like two days and we said forget it we were going to the coast and then it was cool to see the the beaches of a country like Croatia so it was like rocky beach not sandy beach and Mm -hmm. I don't know just very different culture and I loved it was really good I mean it's experience I would have never had if it weren't for the shoot so I can appreciate that I don't think we would have you know Croatia wasn't really on a hot list off the top Mm -hmm. so that was kind of cool and then just but I would definitely say you don't want to go there in July and August the heat was brutal (laughs) it was was killer it was killer okay okay um another (laughs) question I'm trying to question you instead of you yes Uh, what was the best thing you ate I know you had difficulty with the food in the beginning. I did and have difficulty usually with you. I think okay. My while you think about that, my hypothesis on why sometimes when you travel somewhere you have difficulty with the food is because you don't do enough research to find a place that has good <laughs> food before you go, and you just stumble into whatever place looks true. True. And then it's like a tourist okay. trap, or it's like not the mm-hmm. best because it's got two stars on Google because you didn't. And because I yeah. didn't look it up, I know you didn't look okay. it up. And I'm not saying so you do I, the hours of research, but yeah, no, you're right on this. So in my <laughs> life in general, travel, f- I know for you and for Steven and how a lot of people in your age group in particular travel 
it's about the food and it's not just you because I've I remember working with a creative uh, art director or something from an agency and she was like if it's not about the food when you travel what is it about and I was like huh question mark in my head because I've never thought it was about the food for me it's always been I travel because let I me guess see the, cult, the, the, the people, people. <laughs> Yes, I the love people. To sit, the people. I like to sit in the square and watch the children play, or sit in the little area and observe the people. I am, ta- Dad will say museums and culture. I am about people, so not a surprise, right? So I don't really put a lot of stock in the food part of it, but be having now. Ex- now I'm older and I've experienced more and traveled more with people who are concerned about the food. I am more aware, so. That becomes me, oh, I don't do the research ahead of time, so I'm roaming around trying to find the thing. And then I'm, I got to a point where I was like, what am I doing the first night? I have to stop and eat something, but where am I going to eat? Because I hadn't done any <laughs> research. Mm-hmm. But I did find a good mm-hmm. restaurant. But I will tell you, I am a picky eater, and I do have problems with like peppers and onions and garlic and all of that. However, two things I ate in Croatia that were amazing. Number one, and I'm sorry, but they have great pizza. I think they're so close to Italy. So... The pizza for me, every I, we had pizza twice only, and it was phenomenal. It was such good pizza. That's number one. But number two, the last night when we went out, the last night when we were with the TikTok, when I was with my TikTok friend, Alida, she told us we have to eat this certain thing that was uh, Croatian, and I was nervous because I'm like, oh, my God, she's going to make me eat peppers and onions, and I'm going to feel bad, <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. But she explained it was, it was called... Mm, something with a C, chevre or something like that. And it, it's basically like minced meat. Consider, can, think of it like hamburger meat in a way that's in um, sausage form. And mm-hmm. they serve it with this sauce and they serve it with like a bowl of onions. And I was like, you can hold the onions, please, por favor. But it was delicious. It was really good. So those were the two things I ate that were great. What else would you like to ask me next? Well, that's exciting that you and I think it's funny that you, I feel you always get pizza wherever you go like you could literally go to like <laughs> China and you'd be like I want to find out I, I had the best pizza like I just think you're a pizza really? person that like no matter like where you'd pizza. go you'd be like this is the best pizza ever yeah okay I don't yeah I don't eat a lot of pizza but when I do I do like pizza when I travel because <laughs> it's, it's like an experiment <laughs> you know what else I like when I travel is fun facts so I'm not big on history <laughs> I did that tour of Fun the bike facts tour. are history. No, no, not okay. Let me let me clarify because I had this epiphany again. I'm trying to be so mindful when I'm in situations now. And I went on that bike tour and I was like, okay, we're gonna learn the history. Cause I could see right away he stops in the first square and he starts talking about the statues and the in the sixteen hundreds this, the seventeen hundreds that literally I'm glazing over at this point. I cannot process when it's years and rulers and forget it it just I couldn't tell you what year anything happened it just does not stick for me it's not of interest so it does not stick so I kind of zone out but when they get into like a fun fact thing put a hemp low when it was we passed by the store and he stops and he's telling us neckties were invented by Croatians I thought that was so interesting so right away I'm like tuned in <laughs> and I'm immediately like tuning in on that fact then it was he's talking about a statue and who battled this that what whatever I barely paid attention all of a sudden he goes well when there's one leg on the, up on the horse it means and I'm like say what like so one leg up means they the person riding it died from natural causes to, if the horse has two legs down on the ground or all four legs in, in essence down on the ground it means they died fr- in battle so I thought that was Is an this interesting just a Croatian fun fact. thing. It's he said it's Croatian, but it's in a lot of Euro- Europe. So I thought that was like an amazing fun fact. Also, parachutes were invented by Croatians. So fun facts I love. There was another thing. There was um, a shield on one of the things, and he was talking about whatever the battle, this that. You know, again, I'm glazing over. <clears throat> and then he says that the the king won won the prisoner. That he was into chess, and he won uh, a chess game to win the prisoners back freedom or the win the prisoner's freedom. And I was like, now that's a fact I can wrap my head around. So I have no idea when it happened, what king it was. But I was like, oh, that's such a cool fun fact. That's why there's a chessboard on the shield. Like those things I can, I'll remember forever. <laughs> but I can't like with history, no. It just doesn't stick. I don't know. No, it doesn't <laughs> stick. Okay. What else, we can, what else do you want to know? Can, 
No, we can start to wrap up. I'm trying to think oh, of like a I don't good want to wrap up. This is such a fun show. I'm so excited to talk about the trip. <laughs> I haven't had a chance to talk to anybody about it. This. Let me talk about what a little one more thing about the work stuff, just because it was so. Okay. Uh, here's how it's evolving in the work zone, and I love it. So, I'm on the shoot. There's a director that's directing the main stuff, whatever the main stuff is. Nobody even shares it with me. I don't even know what's supposed to be happening. Although I have noticed that since I'm working with them, all of a sudden I'm watching like set number one over there and I'm like, huh, they're doing transitions. She's doing her like record swipe. And I'm like, hmm. So they're learning things from me on the, from the agency, mm. the creative. It, they're, yeah. they're picking up what I'm putting down kind of thing. And I'm like, ooh, this is a curious thing. So mm. number, hmm, eyebrow raise, mm. kind of like that. I'm like, look at that. But, and then they're, and then, so that's happening in another set. But then it's me having time to do my thing. And what I did learn this time was because I'm not the directing the main shoot, it's very difficult. So I'm not the priority for the set and the crew. And it becomes a little bit of a challenge for me to be able to get my shots because they, no one's told like, oh, she's a priority. Make sure she has five minutes at the end before you wrap the set. That's why I was whipping around this turn. They were wrapping up a set and I'm like, no, I didn't get my shots yet. And I'm trying to whip around to, so I did say at the end of it for the next one, we have to think of a better process for me being able to not have to be running around like a crazy person. Cause it was a lot of things mm -hmm. going on on, on four different sets and I could not keep track. So by the end of the week, we did figure that out, but it was, it was very, interesting to see that my role is very important to that process so as much as there is this main director doing this main thing I'm I'm a very important piece of the puzzle there and I, it's fun to see that because I think from because I'm not the director the main director on those shoots it's a very weird psyche for me to have to walk into it and feel like they're not really and it's not that I don't feel important, that's not the right word, but it's, I know, I even know from a crew perspective that I'm not as um, high, highly regarded on the shoot. So it's been yeah. a little challenging to, to find a place for myself and to, yeah, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it's evolving. No, it makes sense. Cause we'll, we'll just, we'll you're, just you're learning more with every shoot. Yeah. It's getting better though. And the value is good before the next one like you should maybe yes. try and outline that you need to be prioritized a little more at the end of the sets julie that's why yes so here's what happened on the in the van on the way to the airport was i spoke to the one producer and i said you know for next time and i made some suggestions what maybe could happen for next time that could be better and um, you know as we move forward on these things and and he said something like yeah because you know we we do what you're doing is great. Like we love it kind of thing. But then I realized also he might not be on the next shoot because they have a lot of producers. Mm. So I decided, and I have already done this. You'll be so proud of me, but I wrote to the, the head production, head of production, who's the one who keeps bringing me in for these shoots. And she's, and I wrote to her and I said, this, this, and this on the wrap up and I'll I have more edits coming, blah, blah, blah. And then at the end of the email, I said, I would like to set up a meeting where we could talk about the process for my role on the shoots moving forward so that we can improve things. Because, and I do want to say at that time, I didn't say it in this email, but <laughs> at the time I'm going to say, I need it to be better. So I'm not whipping around turns, knocking myself out, trying to get shots <laughs> because she knows mm -hmm. that I almost <laughs> knocked myself out trying to get a, get to a shot before it got wrapped. And so, yes, it's I am a very patient when it comes to this I, I just think you know what there's no rush like my time's gonna come they're gonna they I know they see my value especially when I start seeing my creative influence in the stuff mm -hmm. that they're doing so it's really kind of cool so yeah exciting yeah it's a, Making it's a new chapter it's a new chapter I'm enjoying it and I'm I'm when I said on the first one oh, I don't know if I could do this anymore because I just don't like being that low priority on a shoot but I as, as I'm seeing my high value versus my low priority and I think mm. it's my mindset is is really good it's so good. I know Yay. it's good good and then it was like a trip I never would have taken so it's super cool I know you guys never would have gone I'm glad you guys went you saw my Instagram where the ones from the LA shoot have now been released mm -hmm. from, and I'm so excited to see them <laughs> it's cool 
Because usually I cool. see my TV commercials, I see my TV stuff on TV, but I never, I've, I haven't really started to see any of the things now on social media until recently. So it's been a yeah. while wait, waiting for them to be released. Like these won't be released for almost a year. May, I mean, yeah. maybe six, maybe six months, I hope. But so it's cool. So that's it for this well, week. Hap- happy to have <laughs> you back in the fold. <laughs> and then you're going to be leaving. I know, but I'll still be working a little bit. So okay. I'm not. Yeah. And I'll be on the, I'll, I'll be in your time zone. You'll be in the time zone so we could actually connect. But yes, I'm, I, it was very weird to be gone for so long and not speaking to you daily. And yeah. I know we still texted often, but that time difference, it was six hours from New York, but it was nine hours for you. So literally we only had a window of like three or four hours in the day where mm-hmm. we could connect. It, I will say it, it was so nice when I passed my kidney stone because I passed it at like 1030 PM here and everyone on the East coast was asleep. But then I texted you because it was like, you were getting up early for a shoot. I was like, I passed it and you were awake and that was, I was awake. perfect timing, but you, you would have been awake even if you were on the East coast. Yeah. So it didn't yeah. really matter, but. No, yeah. that was fun though. Yeah, it's just, it was, it was fun to, um, yeah, it was, it was cool, but I felt like I was on this hiatus away from you and I realized how much we, I don't know, we're very part of our, each other's day to day life. I know. It is crazy. Well, it we're is. back. We're back in yeah, the fold. I'm back. I'm back. All right. So we have lots of things to talk about work wise. So we have to end this. How's that sound? <laughs> and get to the Sounds work. Sounds good. It's really fun to be back. I've missed you. And, I uh, missed you. I th- I know. All right. So let's wrap it up. Yours truly, Helen and Julie. If you enjoyed the podcast, we really would love to know what you like about it. We'd love to have you either leave us a review or reach out and tell us what you think. I mean, it's so much fun when we hear from listeners. I get a huge kick out of it. So please let us know if you're enjoying the conversations and if you have anything you'd like us to talk us to talk about, because we'd love to tackle any topic. We're in. We're in for it all. Right, Jewel? Oh, yeah. All right. And if you uh, want to learn about social media, hellosocialize.com. You know where to follow us on our socials. It's always in the show notes. And I guess that's it for today. See you next week. See ya. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye.